Alpha. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar session from TCS. Uh, in this session, we'll talk about uh, how TCS Business 4.0, a thought leadership framework, helped a major Australian financial institution transform its TCM landscape. About uh, me, uh, I'm Tapas Naik, one of the lead enterprise content management architect in TCS, having more than 14 years of IT experience, worked with various uh, customers, architected and deployed multiple ECM platforms across the globe. I'm currently I'm based out in Sydney for Australia and New Zealand geography. Today we'll walk through the highlights of the exciting journey of how a big uh, Australian enterprise with humongous content stored in multiple platforms was facing a lot of challenges managing those content. Unlike other enterprises also do the similar fashion. So challenges for an example, managing the contents, emails coming from a customer categorizing them, consolidation report out of it, tracking the documents uh, received, how, what are the documents can be asked back from the customer customers in case of it's required as a part of the organization process. So these are the challenges normally any of the enterprise content, any of the enterprise faces while dealing with unstructured content or the, so, how TCS helped here, how TCS helped the organization adapting or putting the framework to overcome all the challenges which the organization was facing. So that's the details which we are going to discuss. On such content, or the content or the data, data growth is huge in, the, in, in, the, in any of the organization in the world. So a joint study done by IDC, International Data Corporation in the US based firm, and Seagate. The global data share will grow to 175 jettabyte. So jettabyte is one million of petabyte. One million petabyte is a single jettabyte. So by 2025. So what it is right now? In 2008 there is a study which mentioned like it is only 33 jettabyte. So within five to six years of time, we can imagine how the data growth would be. And the prediction is, within that data, what you call it the data sphere of the world, within that data, more than 60% of data is on structured content. And what is the ECM stands for? ECM is Enterprise Content Management. What it, what it, just does, what it does? Actually, it's a set of processes in different technologies to capture, manage, store, preserve, and deliver valuable contents and documents to the organizational processes. So it's completely life cycle of the content which is through by ECM. Enterprise content management is dealing with the content and the Starting from capture to the disposal, all these documents, all these uh, contents being managed by the part of the platform. So we'll just give an example. What what is this? How how is being related to this organization? It's a financial institute. There are insurance uh, segments. In the insurance uh, uh, segment, there are claims document, insurance forms, customer documents. And similarly, if you talk about any of the banking uh, uh, enterprise, the KYC documents, know your customer documents, document related to the daily deposit accounts, home loans, any of the personal or commercial lendings. And in any of the enterprise, human resource department will have a lot of documents related to the employees, employees uh, offer letter, joining letter, experience letter, medical checks, pay slips, everything. So the point is the content is important for the organization, uh, unstructured content, what we call that it's in forms of emails, electronic documents, 
images, videos, audios, content, web contents, paper documents, it's all belong to that category. It's a huge challenge how, for any of the enterprise which they are dealing with. So how we transform here in this institution. So that's the details which we discuss. The transformation journey started for this big institution. So this big institution is having more than 1,200 branches across branches across Australia, New Zealand, North America, and Asia, Europe, and with more than 50,000 employees in this institution, serving for 15 million, around 50 million customers. So we can imagine how big, how big is the employee, and what are the content, how big is the size of the content which are coming to the institution for day-to-day -day basis. So in this institution, because of their different line of businesses are there, there are a lot of legacy platforms, legacy applications or ECM uh, platforms which have been used by different line of businesses to store and manage all these contents. And as we uh, uh, highlighted earlier, there are a lot of challenges in managing those. We we'll go uh, when we discuss about what are the challenges, how the challenges are uh, kind of it's a hindrance to the business process. Because of the nature of the business of this enterprise, so enterprises, most of all, it's the financial institutes, you know, Australian based, have uh, humongous unstructured content which is being handled by these institutions. All these documents which you talk about, all these electronic documents, emails, access, the daily deposits, uh, statements, the communications which are going to outside as well because for a reference or for a uh, referral guidelines point of view, we, they, they store uh, the communications which are being sent to the customers. All these home deposits, communications, all these home loans, all these uh, credit card statements, all these different products, financial products which they communicate to the customers so they have a copy for a compliance point of view. So those are the contents which are... So different departments or so different line of business have uh, their own ECM or they're using the legacy platforms. And it's, it's happened because of time it happened and all these ECM platforms are working in silos. There is no, nothing as such that the integration which is there. It's documents or the for contents which being received by different line of businesses in it. It's not following a standard process to identify the documents, categorizing the documents, and storing it in a proper way, or in the way it's defined, which is a, on a security or compliance. It's not being followed. We need to do information governance. Compliance and security regulatory audits is not being followed. Data is being not being uh, placed properly. Somewhere in the tape drive, somewhere, so somewhere in the um, shared drives being managed, not being properly categorized. So those sort of uh, challenges that are there in, in this in, in, in the organization. So that's the first challenge, which is having the multiple uh, contents, multiple uh, ECM platforms. So multiple ECM platforms, because there are multiple ECM platforms and being not managed properly, not tuned properly, so that lead to degraded performance. You will not get the, uh, yeah, on time, the data can be extracted or the, you can you cannot get the report properly, you cannot get, uh, uh, so those are the uh, things which is being uh, there in this organization, so it's when the multiple platforms was there. Just in case of one of the example is end of financial year or end of calendar year, there are a lot of data which will come into the uh, institution for processing. But it's not to be handled because these platforms are not meant to handle the large loads or it's not resilient, not highly available. So it's because of it's not being managed properly, tuning is not done, 
product stat is not maintained, content, the content which came up is not being handled, and which lead to, because of the multiple platforms, the total cost of ownership is high. You need to maintain multiple platform, multiple hardware, multiple software, multiple team to mentor it. So these are the challenges. And uh, when it is scattered across, reporting from the data to get it from those systems are quite challenging. You you cannot get the uh, consolidated view of the data where it is coming, how it has been stored, and is there any uh, relation between that? How to establish that between the data if data is in this department or that department? If some approvals required from here as well as there, you don't have. So these these are the challenges which the uh, institution was uh, facing for a longer period. So what TCS does it here? It's TCS thought leadership to establish a new gen ECM enterprise. So we defined a certain set of goals and from that goal how it can be achieved. So the first goal is a centralized system. So the lacking or the issues which we which the institution was facing is multiple platforms. So that's the first criteria. So first goal is to centralize the repository. Centralize the repository will have benefits like you have a single data model, taxonomy, standardized taxonomy can be followed so that the data categorization can will be universal within the organization. And it is a standardized process. So next, the goal is compliance and security. So that's uh, important from in, um, uh, information or the when you are handling the content. So that's the another goal which this is defined. Compliance and security were not there in all of the systems. It's not being followed properly. So how it's been designed here, continuous data protection and security are two parts on um, taken under compliance and security. Continuous data protection is a mechanism to real-time do a data backup of a system. If something goes wrong to the system, a disaster happened, one of the data centers burnt out, blown out, your data can be recovered to the last transactions to 100%. So data is value for an organization. So if you lost the data, then uh, the business value um, information is a value for a um, on enterprise. So that's a critical uh, design uh, decision or the goal which is as design, continuous data protection and data security. So the data security, data should not be mishandled, mismanaged. So data at rest, data in transit. So all your, whenever the data is getting stored, you, you just need to make sure and so we design in such a way that it's, it's all encrypted at rest or encrypted in transit. Third goal is common services and UI. So it again came from the same uh, way. Uh, it's when visit to a particular branch, and he, ha he or she has some multiple things to do it. He requests for this. The person who is serving it, he needs to switch between the different UIs and UI applications to serve them, serve the customers. So that's a productivity loss, which in turn again go to the business loss. So the third goal was to common services and UI. So what are the department across? You have a common services which is defined to integrate for any of the application common UI to be served. You can log into that same portal and get your data based on your permissions. So that is an advantage which the uh, institution got. It's a productivity gain for the institution. It was facing a lot of challenges when it's having multiple systems. You switch between the systems. All these, so that's a huge number. Of, you can imagine there are 50,000 employees. If 20% or 30% were using that system on a, you know, for an application consumption point of view, so that's a productive, huge productive gain for the enterprise. Content translation and adapter. So content translation and adapter is a, uh, is a 
mechanism or it's it's a thought where you put in to make the system much more uh, futuristic it's the next gen ecm so the point is there are multiple formats of documents multiple type of documents multiple type of contents being handled by the enterprise so financial institute there are a lot of communications which came from the customer there are a lot of uh, documents or the lot of uh, uh, files which generated by the different systems for an example i'll just take an example of it one of a uh, file which called as it's a print print media file it's a print stream file which came normally from the erp system so where it provides the uh, statements to the customers the statements of the file size would be around uh, 80 to 100000 pages in single file and that that file cannot be handled easily by any of the custom any of the bank any of the institution employees and it requires special tools and special skills to handle it to search it and so what we have done it here what uh, as it uh, teaches uh, thought process we done it here we put a translator to make it universally adaptable or uh, accessible formats just like pdf the hc we converted into pdf so it can be easily accessible by all these people who are there in the bank also by the customer so that's the mechanism or that's a goal which you put it to make it okay what are the content is the main uh, format which is accessible so that's that we have done it similarly different adapters we have put in place to communicate to the central repository so whatever the system is how the communication can be so communication would be easier whatever the data flow is coming or going that integration we made it the adapters we made it translation was easier just to give it like a universally accessible format which can be easily accessible so it's more towards keeping or making the business simpler and next gen so that it can add values exponentially that's the object and the uh goal one uh, five which is uh, as a service offering so goal one to goal four is more towards a technology uh, really advanced and uh, addressing the issues and solution goal five is more towards as a service offering how the services can be effectively efficiently provided to the um, provided to the institution so that's the model which this is put in here as a service offering so as a service offering it's a solution next gen solution which is designed to provide end to end service starting from design deploy migrate and the manners the all the platform and offer it as a platform and offer it as a pay as you go model and see consume and then you pay whenever you consume the data on a transaction basis or on then you pay it out so it's a model which is provided as an efficient way of managing this efficient and effective way for the customer so as a service offering what are the benefits it's a innovative pricing model which was given to the which was given to the customer service based model price per document is a charging model it's what the benefit benefit for the customer is or benefit for the business in is they can predict the cost how much is going to be it's not like something ad hoc came on the system and then into maintain it it's all being managed at a package it's only a paper use based on the transactions per document cost being charged to the uh, business units and this is hosted the solutions I have taken all this uh, with the expertise from Infra, with the expertise from uh, uh, Domain Knowledge, the same platform. So this is the chart of uh, ISO's offering, which is given. 
only highlights what the customer has gotten. Customer has gotten centralized repository to handle generic services to being offered. It can be easily integration. The integration can be repeatedly used. Stable platform. It's highly available, highly resilient platform. Only it can go down four minutes in a month. That's the only thing. So it's 99.99 percent as availability. Stable platform. We covered near to 300 days without any incidents, anything, which leads the customer to accelerate their new business in initiatives. And mainly because of the data size is huge, and the customer has the realized the benefits. Currently, more than 43 million transactions per month. Posted 150, more than 150 terabyte of data. All this decoupled way of application design, agile methodologies for efficient governance from TCS as well as the institution has been placed. Expert domain knowledge is being uh, because uh, we have proven TCS has proven a lot of implementation expert in, uh, in uh, managing the ECM platforms, deploying the uh, ECM platforms. Oh, the customer benefits. Customer got uh, on a financial point of view, uh, savings, annual savings. Governance is easy for customer. Predicted for costing was given. Projections for um, uh, next six months to uh, 12 months has given to the customer. And it's expert in the context of knowledge because we go TCS manage the platform as a holistic point of view. It's completely all this domain expertise from different uh, line of businesses using that system. This is recommending on uh, um, the reporting the better way if adapting to the different technologies and all. There are several appreciations or several uh, call outs is given by different uh, service owners, uh, customers, general managers, executive managers. So, uh, fermented near about 300 days without any higher priority incidents shows that how capable, how the uh, platform can handle the stability of the platform. So, that's a big call out from customer. And the uh, domain export is what the team is having is one of the major uh, call out from the customer as well. So every time this platform has been appreciated by different layers of the uh, leadership within the organization. So thanks everyone. Uh, that's it from my side. Thanks for joining the session and hearing me. For any, any further questions, you can type in the chat window provided. I'll try to answer as much as uh, I can within the time limit. Uh, hi, there is a question from uh, one of the uh, viewer. Uh, it's like, uh, is it specific to the financial institute or it is something can be, this model can be implemented in any other enterprise? So the answer to it is yes, it can be implemented across any enterprise because all these enterprises are having a unstructured content and uh, all, each enterprises having 60 to 70 percent is having the unstructured content. Yes, it can be implemented across any enterprise. So there is another question which is how much time it would require to establish this kind of solution. So it's more towards uh, how big is the enterprise, what the, uh, how the structure is being defined, the data size. But yes, from the program point of view, we have the solutions uh, and the uh, components already with the best practices and uh, lesson learned across what being implemented. So for Putting or implementing the solution, it will be as quick as, as possible. But looking into the data set, the data set of a media management is different from the data set of a HR or data set of the financial thing. So there will be specific requirement to a data set. 
how we can deal with that what a program point of view the execution point of view yes it can be uh, kind of implemented uh, uh, the best practices can be put in place the model uh, has been already defined and fine tuned so that can be implemented and uh, another point is what the business benefits of this program so yes so when do you up the the business benefits most on the customer point of view when we looked at it you have multiple platforms you have a fragmented view of the customers so so we are bringing it to a single view so this program is bringing the centralized and uh, a single view of the customer and with this model customer no is not having not to put in more thoughts about the managing and uh, putting on the it instead of that they can do in the uh, more focus on the new business engagement uh, product initiatives um, marketing branding and all those sorts of things can be happen on the focus side of that thing instead of uh, putting on maintaining on the it and all the sort of thing to handle it so and coming to the compliance of the views which are coming up for the different uh, kind of uh, regulatory go governance and compliance so that can be easily managed as a part of the platform so that's uh, on a, on the data side of it it's much more important when you are aligning with the uh, compliance and uh, regulatory go regulatory governance so another point is so what are the best practices being followed with this program so what are the best practices being followed and what the lesson learned which uh, came up as part of uh, uh, with this program so there are multiple components which uh, came into picture as uh, part of the best practices so one is the organization readiness so for an organization how quick how effective the organization how we can part because all these are scattered across how we make it together so that it can be easily the readiness of the organization and all this change managed to be in place so that it can effectively do the quicker way of uh, implementation how the program can be scheduled in a better way so that we can uh, deliver it effectively and coming into the without impacting or giving a seamless of uh, uh, seamless experience to the existing customer and more putting the technical uh, expertise to bring into a better i think uh, thank you thank you for uh, uh, listening to me uh, today i listened to this uh, but a beautiful and the experience of uh, having the uh, implementation to perform better in the organization and uh, for more questions on this uh, uh, how this is being implemented on the business on the technology side of it you can reach out to services.marketing@tcs.com with id and uh, more details can be provided there thank you